Hi, Dr. Ken here with you again. Welcome to AC lesson number two, part three. So we're going to be looking at phasor addition and subtraction, and this is slides 27 to 37. So phasor diagrams can be drawn in two ways. We can use a parallelogram method where construction lines are required. In actual fact, I shortcut that by uh, using a compass, and you've probably heard me in previous lessons explaining how you can do that or using a method without construction lines in which phases are placed with their construction lines would otherwise have been, and that's called the top to tail method. So phasor addition. When phases are being added, the phasor diagram can be drawn using a technique called tip to tail construction. In this method, rather than draw construction lines and produce a parallelogram, each phase is drawn so its tail starts from the tip of the preceding phaser. So here's a tip to tail method. You probably recognize this diagram from the previous lesson. We had an AC supply. We had a current at 7 amps at 40 degrees lead and another current at 8 amps at 20 degrees lag. So there's two ways to do this using tip to top it, sorry, tip to tail method. The first approach is A. So we can start by drawing in our 7 amp phaser at 40 degrees. That's this one here. So it's 40 degrees lead, so it's 40 degrees in the positive direction. 40 degrees lead and we're using one amp per division. So one, two, three, four, five, six. There's seven amps. Then we're adding in or top to tailing because this is the addition of a phaser. And we draw a line at horizontally and we know that our next phaser is at minus 20 or 20 degrees lag. So we draw down 20 degrees using our protractor we project out a line, its length being 8. So 8 divisions, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we find that end point. So now that we have that end point, we can now project back to the origin. And the length of the line is the current, in this case 13 amps. And its angle from the horizontal 7.8 degrees. Number two method, equally as well, works equally as well. We draw in our first phaser, this time our I2 at 8 amps at minus 20 degrees. We tip to tail and this time we draw a horizontal line this way and at 40 degrees, we then draw in our 7 amp phaser. Again, we actually end up in exactly the same point as the previous method. We project back, its length is our current, and its angle is our phase angle. So that's the tip to tail method. You can, doesn't matter which phase you add in first, you always end up in the same place anyway, so the order is irrelevant. So phase of subtraction, that was phase of addition, so now phase of subtraction. When phases are being subtracted, the phaser diagram can be drawn again using a tip to tail construction approach. In this method, each phase is drawn so its tip starts from the preceding phaser. So in this particular diagram, we know we have a voltage total of 120 volts at minus 10. We know we have a voltage of 85 at minus 30. And we want to know what voltage one is. 
we're going to do the same thing as we were as if we were going to add them but rather than that we're going to find the difference by finding the missing phaser so here we draw in our V2 at 30 degrees at 108 sorry at 85 volts then we draw in our volts total so it's the black line volts total length of 120 volts at our 10 degrees so if you can see the parallelogram the difference between this point and this point is the phaser that would make the completion of the parallelogram so between here and here would complete the parallelogram so by measuring this distance here and measuring the angle from the horizontal we're going to end up finding what voltage one is and we'd scale the length off we would get our protractor out and we'd measure the angle here from the horizontal and that would give us V1 so that's phasor subtraction it's kind of just the reverse process of phasor addition in our second diagram here we could take this line or we can just take this one up and project it onto there find that point and then measure back so we could take this blue one project it to here again the opposite side of our parallelogram find that point measure it back find that angle it's the same thing so either way we'll do the job so tip to tail phaser diagram to find a v1 via phaser subtraction which is really just phaser addition done in reverse so lesson summary so this summarizes the whole three lessons electrical power in most parts of the world is AC produced by alternators that output a sine wave shaped waveform doesn't matter where you go everybody uses sine waves in Australia and New Zealand the frequency is always 50 Hertz and our homes are supplied on a single phase it's called at 230 volts RMS an RMS value has the same heating power as the value of any of a DC value of the same size unless otherwise indicated all AC voltages and currents are assumed to be in RMS if you remember that the sine wave is a fundamental wave shape and all other wave shapes come from this e.g. squares triangulars and complexes are all combinations of a sine wave the time taken to complete one waveform is called the periodic time students tend to forget that when it comes to exam time the time taken for one complete cycle to go from start to max back to zero down to max negative back to zero that's the time taken that's the periodic time the reciprocal of periodic time gives the waveform's frequency and this is measured in Hertz capital H lowercase z true RMS values of a sine wave this is the important number to remember 0.707 or if it, I remember it by saying it's 70.7 percent so I multiply by 0.707 so it's 0.707 of the volts max doesn't matter whether you use the volts max positive or negative it's the volts max and the average value of a sine wave is 0.637 of the max a sine wave has a form factor of 1.11 and a crest factor of 
If it doesn't have either of those, it's no longer a sine wave and our little RMS thing doesn't work anymore. If a waveform has a difference from a crest factor of the value, as I just said, it's no longer a pure sine wave. We can have things called what we call modified sine waves. It means they're close to a sine wave, but they're not perfectly a sine wave. Quite often we'll still use our RMS values because it's close enough. AC voltages or currents may be in phase or out of phase with each other. And when they are in phase or out of phase with each other, the total value is the algebraic sum of their values. So if they are in phase or out of phase by 180, we can actually use algebra directly. When out of phase, the total value is found with a phasor diagram and some trigonometry, as we've just discovered. A phasor diagram always has a reference phasor, which is a line drawn horizontally across the page. For a series circuit, we use current as the reference. For a parallel circuit, we use voltage as the reference. A phasor is a straight line with a length representing its voltage or current, always in RMS, drawn at an angle relative to the reference and equal to its phase angle. A leading phasor is drawn above the reference line. A lagging factor is drawn below the line. The phase angle of a voltage or a current can be shown with a symbol. We can use an angle symbol followed by the angle. A minus sign indicates a lagging angle. So if we have 10 amps angle minus 40, we know it's lagging. But quite often we'll actually write 10 amps 40 degrees lag. But sometimes we will write lag, sometimes we will put a minus sign in front. Quite often I will draw a plus sign in front to indicate that it's leading or write the word lead behind it. So here we end um, lesson two, part three. I hope you've enjoyed all the parts of lesson three.